Hello, and welcome to the Oracle of Light. I'm Shauna DeMellon. I'm a lifelong medium and certified life coach. And making the connection with the afterlife has brought me the greatest joy. Since losing my son, Jack, I have navigated grief, heartache, and despair. And it was through connecting with my son on the other side that my heart began to heal and I was able to find joy and meaning in my life again. Now, I'm inviting you into this space as I explore the afterlife, the grieving process, and rebuilding after loss. If you'd like to discover the spirit world and how to move through the loss of a loved one or child, you have come to the right place. This is the Oracle of Light. You are listening to the Oracle of Light podcast. I am your host, Shauna DeMellon. I am so excited for today's topic. I was just chatting with the peeps, (laughs) the powers that be. And yeah, I asked them, I said, what do you want to talk about today on the podcast? And what we're going to talk about today is making the connection with your angels. Yes, 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 yes. Now, if you're new here, I'm Shauna DeMellon. I am a psychic medium. I connect with the souls of deceased loved ones, spirit guides, and angels. I also love to teach classes. And so the first thing I like to explain to people in making the connection with your angels is to help you understand a little bit more about the energetics. So our angels are at a higher vibration. Everything is energy. You are energy. The angels are energy. Our loved ones in spirit are energy. Everything is energy. And as we start to raise our vibration, we bring our energy closer to the angelic realm, and that makes it easier for us to connect with and experience our angels. And what's interesting is that a lot of people are really distracted. And so I've talked about this on um, a lot of the TikToks lately. If if you're not over on TikTok, I invite you to come on over and find me, Shauna DeMellon, Psychic Medium. I'm live on TikTok every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So spirit energy is very subtle, very subtle. And if we are busy, if we are distracted, as an example, we're looking at our watch. Our watches are talking to us. Our cell phones are talking to us. So are our laptops, our computers. <laughs> we may have the TV talking to us. We've got Alexa talking to us. We have our, our, our vehicles talking to us. We may be watching the hockey game. We have all sorts of different distractions and things happening in our world. And everyone does. Everyone does. And so just have the understanding that spirit energy is very subtle very subtle. So if we have a ton of distractions pulling us out of the now, out of the present moment, it's going to be difficult to experience our angels. Same with if our thoughts keep going back into the past, if we're worried about something, if we're replaying conversations, if if we're not settled with how something happened and we're focused on things that already happened, again, that's pulling our energy out of the present moment, out of the now. And if our focus is going into the future, if we're worried about things, how's that going to work? What's going to happen? What is that going to look like? That again is taking our focus out of the present moment. You see, our angels can only connect with us in the present moment, in the now. That's all they know. They don't have any time constraints the way that we do here on earth. No time constraints whatsoever. So their energy is very light. And it's a higher vibration. And if our energy isn't nice and high, if our vibration is lower, that's going to make it that much more difficult to make the connection with them. So we need to look at being free of distractions. We need to look at where our vibration is sitting. Uh, David Hawkins talks about this in, it's called the consciousness scale. So they measured different emotional states and you can Google this. You can look this up. It's it's fantastic information. 
they googled or sorry they they looked um they looked at all of the the common emotions on the planet the lowest emotion on the planet is shame shame is at 20 above shame is grief grief comes in at 75 our loved ones and angels and spirit guides, they are at the level of 500 or above. That is the level of love. So if we take a look at this, if perhaps we're grieving the loss of a loved one and our vibration is at 75, we're not going to be able to raise our vibration up in that moment to connect with and experience our, our angels. Just as, you know, if we're angry, if we're feeling hopeless, if we're feeling despair, any of those sorts of vibrations, those energies, those emotions are going to weigh our energy down. Think of a hot air balloon. So the more that we can think in terms of raising our vibration, and I'm going to give you a multitude of different ways that you can do that. Raising our vibration is so key because not only do we feel better, we're more in alignment with our spirit, who we really are, it makes it easier to connect with experience and communicate with our angels on the other side. And if this is of interest to you, if you'd like to um, know how to raise your vibration, you can go to my website at livealifeyoulove.org, all spelled out. And this will all be in the show notes. I have a meet your guardian angel meditation for free. And I also have raise your vibration meditation for free. So both of those meditations are for free. Um, you just, you get to be a part of my community. Um, I will send out um, newsletter once a month, maybe twice a month, just to let you know what the specials are, if we have specials, any upcoming events. And so again, those meditations are free. So you can listen to those and it'll start to raise your vibration. And you can connect with and communicate with your guardian angel. So in raising our vibration, the first place that I invite people to look at is what they are thinking. What are the dominant thoughts that you're thinking? What is the current narrative that you have in your mind? We can't shift that narrative unless we understand what it is. So we need to look at that. You know, are we thinking, you know, life is hard. I can't get over this. Um, nothing is working out for me. You know, there could be some deeper things, you know, <laughs> everyone's had a childhood. So there could be some deeper things such as, you know, I'm not enough. Um, you know, I, there's not enough love for me and um, I'm not smart enough or I'm not good enough or, you know, there could be some other things percolating, so to speak. So I invite you to have a look at what your dominant thoughts are, because your dominant thoughts are creating your reality. Joe Dispenza describes this perfectly. He says, you know, our intention is what's putting the signal, the broadcast out to the universe. So the intention, the narrative, the stories, the beliefs, all of those different things are part of our, our energetic makeup, if you will. And those are broadcasting out to the universe. And then, depending on what our emotional state is, that will magnetize things to us. So our intention, we're putting that out to the universe, that's our signal. And then our emotional state is what is going to magnetize things to us. That's what the universe is, is paying attention and listening. And then the universe is going to oblige. The universe is going to send us things, align us with different experiences based on the intention and the emotions. So... Here's the kicker. We are creating all the time, all the time. Everything that happens in your world that's fabulous, you created that. Everything that happened in your world that is not fabulous, <laughs> you also played a role in creating that. I remember listening to Esther Hicks. Um, she was on a podcast and she said, you know, um, anytime that things go really well, I think, yes, I created that. And she says, anytime things go really poorly, she says, yes, I created that too, but I can change it. <laughs> so just becoming really aware of what your dominant thoughts are. Because if things are not going according to plan in any area of your life, there is typically a pattern. There's something sitting there. You see, if we don't have whatever that thing is that we would like to have, it could be a not yet that the universe is still working on our order, or it could be we are not letting it in somehow. And again, that could be, Bashar calls it a definition, a definition, a belief, a story, a narrative. Somehow, some way, 
We're not letting it in. We're not in alignment with it. That's the other part of this too. Because when we are in alignment with whatever it is that we would love to have in our world, then it's just a matter of time before it shows up. Because everything is energy again. So in raising your vibration, and again, you can do this in a multitude of different ways, exercise, any sort of movement, um, spending time in nature, laughing, gratitude, basically anything that's going to lift your spirits, bring your spirits so that you're happier, you're feeling more full of life, you're feeling more hopeful, that is going to start to raise your vibration. And this is different for everybody, right? This is different for everybody. I go to the gym and I am lit up like a Christmas tree. I take my dog out for a walk, same thing, out in nature, a brisk walk. It just, oh, it just it revigorates everything, right? Um, sometimes journaling. Sometimes if we're if we're mulling something over, um, you know, the best thing to do is to sit down, grab a piece of paper and a pen and write it out, get it out of your mind. Because if you don't, it'll sit in your mind and your mind will just keep percolating with it. It'll just keep going over and over and over and over. And so our mind is designed to find solutions. It's designed to keep us safe. It doesn't want us to thrive. It doesn't want us to take risks. And it is designed to figure things out. So we can drive ourselves a little bit crazy trying to figure things out. So in raising your vibration, being very aware of distractions, <laughs> we can start to connect with our angels. The other thing too is I like to um, help people to understand that our angels are always with us. They're always available. We all have at least one guardian angel, and our guardian angel is with us before we come into this lifetime. They're with us this entire lifetime until we transition back to the light. They know us the best. Think of your guardian angel as your best friend. They know what you're working on. They know what your blind spots are. They know what, um, if there's anything that's unhealed in your heart, they know what you're struggling with. They know what your potential is. They know what your gifts are. They know what brings you joy. So yes, your guardian angel is with you all the time. They know you the best. And then we have a multitude of other angels. I call it our spirit team. Team spirit. Team spirit. We have all of these different angels and energies that are literally waiting in the wings to come in and help, to come in and guide. You see, we have free will. So unless it is a life-threatening situation, they can't just come in. So, you know, you've probably heard of those stories of a mother who was able to lift the car up and save her child. You know, if it's not your turn, not your time to transition back to the light, then your angels, they will pop in and they will help. And... What I always love to help people to understand is that, again, they are open and available for everyone. I always tell clients and, and students to stay in question. So what do I mean by that? By staying in question, we're continually inviting our angels in. It's kind of like a revolve. It's kind of like those, you know, when you go into an office building and there's that that rotating door, you, know, you hop in and it rotates and it <laughs> it's kind of like that. It's keeping the doorway open. It's keeping a line of communication open and inviting them in. Because when we ask a question, there's always an answer. We may get something right away. There may be something that drops immediately and we have the answer. We have the clarity. We know what we need to do. Or we may listen to a podcast and hear it. We may overhear a conversation. I know my angels communicate um, through my friends. <laughs> Every now and again, I'll be asking about something and, you know, a friend will text me or we'll meet for lunch or I'll get a voice message. And, you know, in that voice message, it's, hey, I don't know why, but I was just watching this. Have you watched this? Have you thought about this? <laughs> and it's like, okay, thanks, guys. <laughs> that is definitely, definitely from my angels. And again, there are so many different angels. I have different angels on my team who help with cooking, who help with my little dog, Maggie, who help with my cat. They help with the energy in my home. I take them shopping. I ask, okay, is today the good day to go shopping? No, go on Tuesday, go at six o'clock. Okay, which mall? Go to Market Mall. Okay. <laughs> they will, yeah, 
If you ask, they will answer. And again, sometimes the answer may not come in the way that we thought it would. And this is, you know, not to have any expectations, just know and trust that your, your questions will be answered. And paying attention to what you're picking up on, right? And this depends on how your spiritual gifts work. We all have, I call them spiritual gifts. Some people call them um, abilities, but I call them spiritual gifts. I think that they're beautiful. And I think it's a beautiful gift to unpack and to look at and embrace. It brings joy into your life. So I think of them as a gift. So we have the four main clairs, clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, and claircognizance. So when I teach classes, I've got uh, our next round of Angel Basics 101 is starting on March 7th. We will get together for an hour a week for four weeks, and you'll meet your guardian angel. You'll know what their name is. You'll know how many angels you have on your team. You'll know how to manifest with the angels, what the signs mean, how to connect with them stronger, how to communicate with them. All the info I'll have in the show notes. But it really comes back to inviting them into your world and playing with them. So they will utilize your strongest spiritual gift first. So it's starting to recognize. So clairvoyance is clear seeing. You know, I see repeating numbers. Things light up. If I'm looking for a book, the book, the spines of the book on my bookshelf will light up and I'll know which one. Um, I will see sparkles of light orbs of light. I see um, angels. I see loved ones in human form. Um, I see, I used to call them the see-through people. Um, I see repeating numbers everywhere. License plates. I'll see messages. There was a day last week I was driving and there was a license plate that said hug. There was another one that said, I see you. <laughs> there was another one that said love. <laughs> and in those moments, of course, I always have gratitude. Thank you more, please. So, just knowing that that's clairvoyance. Clairsentience is our clear feeling. So, you know, I heat up, I cool down, I get gooseies. I can feel my grandmother, you know, sometimes I can feel her stroking my cheek. You know, I can, I can sense and feel different sensations when the angels are with me. And claircognizance is you just know, you know, before the question is even asked. So it's like, I can put Ikea furniture together without instructions. I just have to look at all the pieces and then we put it together. And Clear audience is our clear hearing. So sometimes I hear different voices and no, I don't need to be <laughs> committed. <laughs> I will hear my angels, like Archangel Michael as an example. I know what his frequency feels like. I know what his energy feels like and I know what he sounds like. And so I will hear him speaking to me. I will hear my son, Jack, who is in spirit. I will hear music. And so oftentimes my angels will come through and I'll just hear random, you know, songs start to play in my head. It was so funny. I was out, um, I wanted to get a heart rock. So one of the, one of the signs from my son, Jack, who is in heaven, um, is it's heart rocks. And so I went out to get a heart rock and I thought, oh, there's probably still snow on the ground out at Elbow Falls. It's about, about an hour outside the city. So I thought, no, I'm going to go. I'm feeling guided to go. It was a beautiful day. Sun was shining. It was warm. So I took my boots went out and I'm walking around and yeah, there was a lot of snow, but there was, it was melting along the pathways. So I'm walking along and I stopped and I thought, where is my heart rock? And I heard a snippet from that song by Beyonce to the left, to the left, <laughs> everything you own in a box to the left. I turn and I look and there it is. There's my heart rock. So that is just an example as to, you know, what clear audience can sound like, or if you ever turn the radio on and there's a music, there's, there's a song that's playing just for you in that moment that is your clear audience. So your angels will communicate with you through your strongest gift first. So I invite you to start to look at that. Do you notice things visually? Do you have really strong dreams? Do you see repeating numbers, sparkles of light? Do you get gooseies? Do you heat up? Do you cool down and you're not really sure why and it's not menopause? <laughs> do you feel overjoyed? Do you feel do you feel just so happy and joyous when you feel your loved ones around you? And, you know, do you have, again, do you have information that just pops into your head and you have no idea where it came from? <laughs> That's your claircognizance. And your clairaudience, again, is hearing. So it could be clairvoyance, clairsentience, claircognizance, or we've got 
clairaudience, I get them all, clairaudience, clairvoyance, clairsentience, and I feel like I'm missing one. So clair, clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, claircognizance. There we go. <laughs> I want to make sure we got them all. So again, and if this is something that I can help you with, please feel free to book a session. You can book a one-on-one -on -one session with me and I can help you with your angels and do consider joining us. I've got Angel Basics 101 coming up March 7th and we usually run it every month or every other month. So in making the connection with your angels, you need to look at what your thoughts are, okay? So what are your thoughts? What are you thinking? Because again, the thoughts and the emotions are going to impact your vibration. So what are you thinking? What are your thoughts? What is your state? Are you feeling happy? Are you are you choosing happy? Are you feeling excited about the day? That's all going to impact your vibration. So we want to look at where your vibration is. Where are their thoughts? What are you feeling? What are you focused on? And then we want to look at the distractions. Do you have distractions around you? We all do. What are those distractions? Is it, you know, you've got too many things on the go at once? Is it, you know, if you have ADHD, ADHD brain like I do, <laughs> I have 18 different windows open all the time. And then the work for me becomes closing them and finishing them, <laughs> not leaving them all open. So again, paying attention to the distractions and starting to notice what are your gifts? What is your strongest gift? Because again, that's how they will make the connection first. And then we look at really starting to notice and invite them in. That's another big thing that I always tell people is that you need to invite them in. Okay. So you can talk to your angels. You can ask them a question, ask them for a sign, ask them for a sign, invite them in and they will play with you. Angels, I would really love a sign today. Angels, and you can ask them for a specific sign. Angels, I would really love, I really love a heart rock today. Angels, I would really love to see a feather today. Angels, and keep showing it to me so I don't miss it, okay? So that's another way that, you know, we can start to make that connection. Something else that you can do is you can place your hands over your heart and ask your angels to come closer. And just know that in the moment, in that exact moment that you're doing that, the angels are coming closer. And with practice, you will begin to feel and sense them more and more. It's kind of like a muscle, kind of like a muscle. So in making the connection with your angels, getting a nice, clear vibration, getting your vibration up as high as you can, releasing the distractions, Understanding what your strongest gift is, inviting them in, and then bringing them into play, right? Angels, what can I add to my life today that would bring me more joy? I say every Sunday, angels, fill my week with so much fun. Let's go. Let's do this. Angels, bring me the means, the money, the time, the resources, everyone and everything that I need to complete this project, to enhance my health to bring more ground crew into my world. If I need more, more friends, more peeps, more, more soul aligned people, you can ask your angels for absolutely anything. And then pay attention to how open and available you are. Because if we're asking, but we doubt that we can get the answers, we're not gonna be able to receive it. If we're asking and inviting our angels in, but we are afraid, <laughs> we're afraid of making it, making the connection, we're, we're afraid we're going to do it wrong, we're not going to be able to let it in. And so these are just some of the things that I like to share with people in making the connection with your angels. And so again, invite them in, invite them in to ask them, bring me signs. And again, every time you see signs, when you notice the signs, repeating numbers, if you, if you're guided to, if your awareness picks up on something, I want you to follow through on it. There was a day I was driving home from the farmer's market and I just, I heard one of my angels say, you need to stop at the, I was driving home from the gym and one of my angels said, you need to stop at the farmer's market. And I said, oh, but I don't need anything at the farmer's market. And they said, no, 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 you need to stop there. I said, oh, okay, fine. Okay. Okay. And I know a ton of people at the farmer's market. So I go and I'm a regular and I say hello to everybody. And then I hear Shauna. And I turn and I look and it's one of my favorite, favorite clients. 
And I said, hi, Jackie. Oh my God, it's so nice to see you. And we sat and had lunch together, caught up, and it was wonderful. So I had the awareness. I heard from my angels to go to the farmer's market. I followed the awareness. I acted on it. And then I had a beautiful result. That's how we invite the angels into our world. Again, they can't just come in and take over. They can't. And it is practice bringing the angels in. You can also utilize crystals with angels. There are high vibrating crystals that will bring angels in closer. I just released last week a new candle. It's our first candle in our line and it's called Angel. And all the info is on my bio. All the info will be um, in the show notes and it will be on the website at livealifeyoulove.org. When you get this candle, it's infused with angelic energy. And as soon as you light it, your space will be infused with the angels. So there are just a few ways that you can really start to make the connection with your angels. Angel love is always positive and uplifting and light and fun and effervescent. That is what the angels feel like. And so again, if you want to grab the um, guided meditation to meet a guardian angel, that is on my website and connect with and start to communicate with them and start to invite them in and make sure you drop me a comment below. Let me know how the angels are showing up in your world. Let me know if you're getting any signs from them. I would love, love, love to hear all about it. And March 7th, again, we're starting our next round of Angel Basics 101. All the info is on my is in the show notes and will be on my website at livealifeyoulove.org. We would love to have you. I am sending you mountains, mountains of angelic love. I am so excited for you to make the connection with your angels and to invite them in. They will, they will weave magic and beauty and love in and out of your world and it will be uplifting and it will take things to a whole new level. I'll see you next time here on the Oracle of Light. You can find me on Instagram at Shauna DeMellon Medium or visit my website at livealifeyoulove.org where you'll find my offerings, including my Growing Up in Heaven program that teaches you how to make the connection with your son or daughter on the other side. Thank you for listening and see you next time here on the Oracle of Light.